sports fans, and welcome to another edition of, a uh, special holiday edition of Scott Sports 101. Merry Christmas. I'm hoping you're having a great day with your family and friends. Uh, this is a special holiday edition, and we're going to uh, talk everything today. I've got a couple, not one, but two, and a couple of other uh, younger guests. First of all, I have my brother-in-law, Eric Hoyle. Hello. And his cousin, uh, Aaron Hoyle. And I have, you see holding the sign back there, my niece, Alyssa Hoyle, and my nephew, Jay Hoyle. So we're going to talk uh, Browns and Cavs and Ohio State College football. We'll talk the Fiesta Bowl and uh, the Tribe. And, uh, but first, uh, here is today's Scott Sports 101 holiday trivia question. Ohio native and a Cleveland Browns fan himself <clears throat> from birth, it, it would have made for an amazing success story had things... Uh, had this man panned out in a Browns uniform, things weren't looking good for him. Then he tore his ACL from a primetime game late in 2013. Come 2014, his season started off once again wonderfully, and he even did something that landed himself and teammate Travis Benjamin in the Hall of Fame. But uh, his extremely poor play towards the end of the season led to his benching and subsequent Dismissal later in the off season. Who is the who was this quarterback? I will have the answer a little bit later in the podcast. Well, we're going to start off with uh, some Browns uh, news. Well, right now the Browns will play their final uh, uh, 2019 regular season uh, game, and this will be the finale against the Cincinnati Bengals at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati after a. Uh, Pathetic 31 to 15 loss uh, to the Baltimore Ravens last week. The big question is: Can the Browns avoid a six and ten season, gents, and get the win over the Bengals, the one and fourteen Bengals, and and with a record of seven and nine? Because now Kitchens is not even worried about his job. That's what he well, said anyway, right? I mean, yeah. of course, that's what he always says. Though, yeah, right? he's not. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go he's ahead. not worried probably because he knows he's gone. That that yeah, well, probably. Yeah. Right, right. What's he going to say? Yeah, and yeah. you know what? And you know, this is so crazy to me. It's like, you know, we would think there's one more game left. Cleveland's playing the lowly bungles. And you know what? This should be really an automatic win. But all the crazy crap that has gone on, gone on this year, I think it could go either way. Yeah. It really could. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm right. actually it, picking it, the it bungles to win. Because I don't think the Browns give a crap anymore. If the Browns get behind. Uh, he, the, oh, yeah, absolutely. If they get yeah. behind, it's over, man. Yeah. They quit. Well, uh, he believes the Browns are really close despite their 6-9 and nine record. And he's, st- and he's still not worried about his job, as I just mentioned. And in the wake of Sunday's 31-15 loss to the Baltimore Ravens, that basically killed their playoff chances. But uh, everybody in the building is pulling in the same direction. And they, are, they have nothing but... S- and, and we are close in a lot of areas, he says. But Kitchen says during uh, his press conference Monday, we... Re- we are really close, uh, and sometimes that gets lost in the shuffle, but we know uh, uh, how close we are. He, he and, says that after every game. I was, yeah, uh, and I was our players, say, Yeah, and uh, understand how close we are, and uh, our players understand how they can do better. But I, I don't basically don't agree with that, because they, they should have won more games than what they did, and there were some where they had chances, and they, and they just could not capitalize right. on it. Well, this is what... This is what bad teams with bad cultures and bad foundations and bad histories do. They find a way to screw the game up every single time, even when they should win. Yes, exactly. This is what the Browns do. They've been doing it for 20 years. And for these fans to all of a sudden think that this year they're going to bring in this guy and this guy and they're going to go 12-4 and four or whatever and go to, go to this. I mean, what? Are you kidding me? We were all tricked. Yeah. And we had, <laughs> before, and at the beginning of the season, we had such high expectations for this team, and they just didn't play up to that to those expectations. And you know something else, Scott? Let me tell you something else right now. Now, this is hindsight, obviously, but to me, Freddie Kitchens, head coach, fine, but you know what? You need to have somebody call the play. I, I oh, think yeah. you're you right. way over your friggin' head. With, I mean, just look at some of these wacky – Wacky play calls that he yes. that he's had in all these games. Yes. There's something that happens in every single game. The and fact that it's just the fact that and it's uh, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right about that. The fact that Ken Dorsey was okay with you know well, John a, a Dorsey. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, John Dorsey. 
can can uh, work. You know, the like, fact, God, yeah, that's I great. Know, I'm not good with the flashback. The fact that John and Dorsey, he's the one that put this team together, and I know. Don't and you he told everybody not to believe the hype, but we just we had all these high expectations. The fact for that him. he allowed a rookie head coach. Yeah. To play, call his own plays with all these, all yeah. these talents, team, all these personalities. I play. know, I That's know. It just, ba- it kind of baffles me. It really does. And it's not too early to start talking about the draft because there are several Browns players up for free agency, and they need to find some pieces of the puzzle, especially some offensive linemen. I feel. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, that's one part. And you know, it's so funny that you know. Before the season started, everybody was so hyped yes, up about all these new exactly, players, yeah. Odell Beckham, all this and stuff, yes. and, and nobody said anything about the offensive line. And I'll tell you what, that trade, now of course it's hindsight once again, but that trade that Dorsey made to bring in Olivier Vernon and got rid of that awesome yes, offensive lineman yes. that we had, I mean, it what was a mistake. Was it, uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, that was exactly, a huge mistake. Exactly. That was a huge mistake. And that guy's been out, that Vernon guy's been out for the last seven games. Yeah, I know. Typical of him, too. And he misses and half the season every year. The before that, was, what did he do? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Oh, yeah, he didn't do anything when he did play. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is, though, now with Miles Garrett being out suspension, that, that's very hard on us, too, and that could go into next season. That could go in. Uh, we, we, you never yeah. But we'll have to wait and see on that, but. It better not. Yeah, next year's draft is going to be in Las Vegas. Now will be out uh, on April twenty third. Oh yeah, no way! Yeah. If that goes in the next season, I will be shocked. Yeah, and I, will I don't think so. Uh, I don't next think year's so. draft will be held in Vegas. Now like my, my friend Matt Murphy yeah, 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 for that. Really. He'll be joining me for that. But a year later, in twenty twenty one, the draft will be coming here to Cleveland, Ohio, and I'll be right around First Energy Stadium and. Uh, uh, I can't wait for that. But I think it they, well, they're going to do the picks. It could be Rocket Morgan's Fieldhouse. And these two gentlemen will be joining me for that downtown, Eric and Aaron, along with my really good friend Matt Murphy and my really good friend Richard Turner as well, which will be a year from next year in 2021. We could be, we could be picking number one. That's right. Yeah, well, That's right. I can't wait. Well, I can't we, wait to pick number one because well, we hardly ever pick number one. Yeah. We, we need to, if they want to make the playoffs next season, they've got, Mayfield needs to get the support that the Ravens are giving Lamar Jackson. Oh, absolutely. That's what it is. He's and I think too. We need to make the playoffs next year. We yeah, need to. Well, that's what happens regressed. when you have a good coach like Harbaugh. And, uh, well, I'll tell you, yeah. you know what, you're right. And I'll tell you something else. Now, I've, obviously, I don't know, but I listen to a lot of talk radio. I listen to all that stuff. And I totally believe, I've heard multiple different people say that, you know, Baker Mayfield, he, he he's kind of he's kind of got the run of the place. Exactly. You know, he's not being coached up. Yeah. This coach Freddie Kitchens is kind of like letting him rule the roost, so to speak. And I don't know whether he's getting a big head or what it is, but yeah, he needs to he needs to modest up a little bit himself yeah. too. It's and kinda, I can agree. agree. <laughs> From those commercials. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he, he does. Lives, yeah. He, he does. Yeah, he, he mows does. the lawn. Yeah. yeah, right. He runs weed eaters. That's right. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and uh, kickoff for the Browns game is uh, Sunday at 1 at on, uh, uh, CBS 19. And the Browns, I believe, are favorite. We're going to move on to the Buckeyes. They are favored? Uh, I, are they? Well, I, I don't know. We'll have to wait. I don't know what the oh, spread is. I hate about when they're way. favored. That's a joke. But, um, How was that even possible? We're going to move on to the Buckeyes now. In, in three days, the number two Ohio State Buckeyes and the number three Clemson Tigers, who are in, and who are last year's national champs, will collide. In the Capital One Fiesta Bowl at University of Phoenix Stadium in Arizona, which will be on Saturday at 8 o'clock on ESPN. Now, this college playoff semifinal will be the most talented one and talented and equity game because either team has uh, has played uh, this that either team has played this season. And offensively, Ohio State uh, averages a nation of best 48.7 points per game. I know it's unreal. Yeah, and. Uh, and uh, the Clemson comes in fourth at 46.5. And on defense, the Tigers sit at top, allowing 10.8 points per game. And while the Buckeyes are tied with uh, Georgia n- at number two, giving up uh, 12.5 uh, points per game. Now, this has been one of the be- best Buckeyes teams by far. And I feel they're on the way to an- another national title. Oh, Be- me too. You know, I'll tell you what. Me and Eric have been talking about this the whole season. And, you know, Ohio State always has a good offense. Yes. So they always score a lot of points. But the difference this year, why they dominate, because remember, you know, in the Urban Meyer years, you know, they always seem to lose a game exactly. at a critical time in the season yeah. that they should lose, like Iowa or Purdue yeah. or something. They're but never... this year, they're, they've they been dominating every game, and it's because 
the defense is so much better exactly. this year. That's the reason. Yes, yes. The offense is always good, but yeah. the defense is just bearing down this year every game. Yeah. The closest game they've had was, was it the, the, the other second one. Wisconsin game? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Were they, were they, were they, were they were yeah. shut out in the second half? Right, yeah. And, and then they ended up yeah, winning easily just, anyway. Uh, mm. Right, exactly. So, yeah. And this, I mean, I'll tell you what, I love Ryan Day. Yes. I think he's great. I yes. mean, he, I've, I listened, so. I've listened to him talk before. He's a very down to earth guy. You can tell, like the you know, it seems like the players like him. He yeah, seems to be a fun coach to be around. He gets excited, exactly. you know, stuff like that. I think that was a great hire. Yes, yes. yes. unlike yeah. Freddie. Yes, <laughs> and uh, yeah. the other one that that everybody's going to be focused on is the Peach Bowl between LSU and Oklahoma, because that could determine which team, if Ohio State comes away with the win. That could determine which team Ohio State would play, could be playing in the national championship game. Who you got in that game, Scott? Who you picking in that game? I'm thinking LSU. I'm taking Oklahoma. I'm okay. going for an upset. Right. I'm okay. going for an upset. I, I will State have a bowl anyone. day uh, on New Year's Day. I will have a uh, Scott Sports 101 uh, College Bowl Day edition. And next Tuesday, I will do the best of, of 2019 sports on Scott Sports 101 next week. Uh, and real quick, you know why I'm taking Oklahoma to beat LSU? Because Baker Mayfield Heights used to be the quarterback <laughs> there. That's why. And before we get to the Cavs, it's time now to reveal the, the of Baker answer Baker. to today's uh, Scott Sports 101 uh, trivia question. Ohio native and Cleveland Browns fan himself uh, from birth, it would have made for an amazing success story had this man panned out in a Browns uniform. Things were looking uh, good for him. Then he tore his ACL in a primetime game late in 2013. Come 2014, the season started off once again wonderfully, and he even did something that landed himself and teammate Travis Benjamin in the Hall of Fame. But his extremely poor play towards the end of the season led to his benching and subsequent dismissal later in the offseason. Who was this quarterback? Any one of you guys want to take a crack at it? Spurgeon went. No, <laughs> Spurgeon. That's what I thought too. No, well, you... no, no uh, I'm gonna guess uh, Charlie Fry. No, it's not Charlie um, Fry. Um, oh, Scotty got it. Brian Hoyer. That's exactly who it is. And if you said Brian Hoyer, you're correct. I got the one right last year too, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Much so like you know. Brady Quinn. Was, uh, was, uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> that was uh, Brian Sight. The answer was yeah. Brian Sight. Much like Brady Quinn, Browns fans wonder what could have been uh, had Hoyer not torn his ACL in the 2013 season. Hoyer had looked to play the part of a late bloomer at the age of 30 in producing solid numbers for a team in need of a consistency of consistency at the uh, position towards the end of the 2014 season. However, the match began to wear off, and he was benched following a uh, uh, demoralizing 25-24 defeat at the hands of the Indianapolis Colts. And I have another trivia question on my next podcast, so stay tuned for that. And we're almost out of time, but I want to get to some breaking Cavs news that came in just yesterday. The Cavs traded Jordan Clarkson uh, to the Utah Jazz for Dante Exum and a couple of second-round picks. And Kevin Love is set to see uh, Clarkson go. And in the aftermath of the, of the trade, uh, Love took a to Instagram and shared a photo of himself and Clarkson having a uh, laugh, admitting uh, that this trade uh, that this trade uh, hurt because of the friendship the two uh, built in their short time in Cleveland. And Clarkson was a solid scoring uh, option for the Cavs after uh, being acquired from the Los Angeles Lakers in 2018. Before the before this trade uh, to the Jazz, the, sh- the shooting guard was. Uh, averaging 14.6 points, uh, 2.4 rebounds, and 44, 37, and 88 shooting uh, splits. Jordan Clark, Clarkson has uh, actually, uh, and hopefully, is going to do well with a. Uh, is going to hopefully yeah, be able to go? provide a scoring punch Utah. for the Jazz. And Utah. Oh, Utah. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? We're almost out of time, so we're going to have to wrap this up here. Well, I mean, they're right. They stink, so I think it's really good for anybody else. Yeah. Oh, I know. I'll tell you what. The NBA is so watered down anymore. Exactly. There's like three or four teams that are decent. All the rest of them are just going through the motions. It's so bad. It's so pathetic. I don't even watch it anymore. Right. I, I don't. I mean, I loved it when LeBron was here and we won. But, man, the NBA. Yeah. But, and, but they're making money hand over fist, though. Yeah. Even and these teams that win 12 games a year, they're making money hand over fist. This That's is likely not to be the last move that the Cavs make, though. So expect some moves uh, 
uh, during before the February 6th trade well, deadline. get ready. Kevin Love's going to get yeah. traded too, man. You're We're watching. not going to have time to go over. Yeah, you're right. We're not going to have time to do the trap, but that's going to do it. Uh, have a very Merry Christmas, uh, and 3-2-1, I'm done.